first Terran player that we have today starts to the left side of the map in orange. He is playing for Team FXO and his ideas. FXO ASD! Successful in the first round of Korea, dropped out later on. He's up against the Zerg player today, who actually built his drone very, very late here. Starting to the right side after defeating Choya is once again. Kind of a weird uh, drone that he made. It was like he was considering going for an early pull there was like, no. Uh, that was probably not really the reason, but that's what it appeared to be. Um, his second drone was just slightly late. The last time that we've seen ASD play in televised matches against Zerg players was at MLG Summer Championship. He was able to win against Hawk and against Idra. Also won against uh, Erima San. Who? <laughs> My thoughts exactly. That's an interesting idea. Okay, I have to admit that I never heard of this guy. No offense intended. Yeah. He lost. We see CC first actually come out for ASD. This is not what I expected. You know, ASD can play straight up, but he usually does not. And this is Team League, and he's got the map pick on his side. I expected him to put some pressure on of some kind, do something technical, maybe even a, a gas first type build or something, but uh, not a command center first. That's the last thing I expected from ASD. A drone scout is on the way and will scout it. The pool has already been started, so we won't see a double hatch before pool, but with the information that he's got, he will definitely play this a bit more greedy and focus on his drone production uh, instead of getting too many units early on. The gas is being built very fast here for ASD though. Yeah. And he's actually being delayed by the drone of Ragnarok. Not too significantly, but it's annoying. He sees the gas, he knows that there's gas going on, and of course it's also a question, what is Ragnarok up to? Will he try to play aggressive here? He has his own gas, he can go for a simple speed build, but with the with what we've seen so far from his opponent, it looks more like he really wants to be aggressive. There's just no reason for you to get the gas out this early if your opponent is going for a CC first, if the only thing that you want to do is defend and play an economical game. Yes. Uh, the follow-ups to this are, there's a lot of them. Um, normally you see the Hellion follow-up where you just make a reactor, get that factory down, pressure your opponent with Hellions, yeah, it's a little bit later than normal, but you can still use them to great effect. May see Cloak Banshees as well. We could even see something like Double Factory, but on this map and uh, this timing, it's just not something that's likely. But it would not put it past a player like ASD to make a choice like that. He's, you know, he's known for aggressive play. I really want to say that I think we are going to see either a lot of Zerglings in the early game. This is one of the styles that we've seen by Life Lord. Also, Lino uses this. There's, of course, always the option of a Roach attack. That has been a little bit more popular again just recently. But we will definitely see something coming off uh, Ragnarok here. Yeah. By the way, uh, all, a lot of those choices that I mentioned before as possible follow-ups to this uh, are not going to be used because he only has one gas. He took the first gas and he just stuck with that. He wasn't going to add another one. Sitting in SCB to the top left, is he actually going to hide a command center? That's starting to seem likely what it's going to be. No, he's just scouting. Uh, he's scouting an interesting pattern here, but just wants to make sure his SCP doesn't get killed by Lings. But he barely goes to the Watchtower, a mistake here, but he will actually be able to scout that third. I think before Lings kill him, it's going to be close. Yeah, he'll actually see it. Tip, though, don't send a weak SCV to scout, because it's going to die faster than the regular SCV. Didn't spot the drone, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, so now we have the third base, and there is the Roach Warren. So it certainly looks like we see a Roach and Baneling attack on three bases. This is one of the variations that you can go for. At 36 Harvesters, starting his links already. The speed yep. is completed. Second, gas as well. I think you're absolutely right. This is really looking like what we're going to see. The thing is that he does not really have a lot of gas, so getting enough Banelings will be a bit of a challenge here. As we speak, the, what usually happens is that you build your Baneling nest as soon as you start with the Roaches. That timing works out pretty well. Oh wow, he barely does not deny that SCV scout. A great job though, checking with the Overlord. Repeatedly. But you know, that's actually pretty, if you think about it, that's actually quite decent because yes, he scouted it, but now 
there won't be anything that AST assume. He's not like, okay, well, you don't have a third base, you are definitely trying to put on some aggression. So if uh, Ragnarok plays this well, he can do a lot of damage. He has six roaches already being built. He's now getting more and more gas that he can use for the banelings. And he sees the third base. He knows everything. There is no siege tank. There are currently no marauders. This is a pretty decent start yeah. for Ragnarok. He sees everything he wants to see. He's starting his own double eBay or excuse me, uh, but evolution chamber at home. He drones up. Yeah. He only builds the roaches in order to defend here. I was really surprised by this myself because, uh, especially considering he made this choice to build all these drones on the evolution chambers after he saw that an attack would be beneficial to him. So, kind of weird. I feel like aggression could have really done a lot. Absolutely. This, we've seen this three base roach and uh, um, bailing push by Suoshin, for example. And with the harvest account that he had and just the options, it would have been uh, great for him to just push out. He would have done a lot of damage. He had the scouting information. He uh, knew that his opponent was assuming that he is just going to drone up on his three bases. So right now we have Ragnarok just playing it safe, but there was the potential for aggression. Yeah, it was there. Now it's gone, he's missed his window. The production uh, capabilities have uh, been vastly increased by AST right now with the extra barracks he's taking. And one thing he does really have with this is a significant upgrade. That's something that a lot of Terran players will not go for. They'll rather pressure instead of getting those eBays out, or rather try to be safer and get the eBays later for that reason. But uh, the roaches he's made defensively actually are so useless because AST is not pressured at all that uh, he's kind of in a, a situation now where AST is kind of getting away with not only a fast third commander but the double e base. I haven't seen this defensive roach strategy for a long time. Now there are, there are more roaches, so apparently he wants to be a little bit aggressive with them after all. But just defensive roaches are a little bit out of fashion these days. You rely more on queens, even speed links are being chosen. With a decent creep spread that we have since the last patch, since the queens were a little bit buffed, you can therefore defend the creep tumors a lot better. Yeah. So now uh, there are a lot of roaches, and he uh, might actually just hit this a lot later. Keeps spread is decent. Third base taken for ASD, though. I want to ask you a question now. Uh, you Shoot. know that they were testing uh, on an Antigua map like this, so one of those test maps that Blizzard makes, the queen range being decreased for creep tumors. Do you know if Blizzard officially said that they were not going to patch that, or if they... So I'm kind of curious about this. Officially, I do not know. Okay. If that was a final statement. I was curious about that because that's something I, I was going to mention. That when you, though, if they do change that, the more tumors you have, the better because you can spread it faster. But in this case, he's only spreading one down two different paths each. So if that gets cut off at some point, he's going to have to send his creeps or queens out to spread the creep a little bit dangerously. We have now the fourth base for Ragnarok, and this is really shaping up to be a bit of a different style that he's using here. We have the move out now with the two medivacs. This is usually the time that the Terran player will try to hit. Moving on to creep. Has be careful though, these roaches are definitely strong. There's not a lot of uh, marauders in this composition. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of roaches here, and there's only two medivacs out on the map. It's gonna split well. And now that the wings are gone, I, you know, he's trading with the roaches because he knows he can't really retreat, but this is gonna be an excellent trade for ASD. Even Micros, the marauder back, really nicely done with that medivac. This is a scary position now, suddenly, for Ragnarok. He has to build a lot more units, he's still waiting for his attack, the rest of the roaches and circlings are running in. He needs to pick up here. Yeah, there he does. Now he's just going to go straight for the main. This is uh, an issue that you face as a clear when you skip Mutalist or you don't have those those early Mutalists on the map to stop these pickups. Yeah, but that's not going to matter too much, especially since all the Marines are already low in health. The bigger issue is that he sees the drones and this is devastating because now he knows exactly where the fourth base is. He knows that there is a four, fourth base and this will definitely trigger aggression. He's going to try to drop here, but the medivacs are as known about as the bases. Literally, one thing I really want to point out is that even though he lost those tumors, something that Ragnarok is doing that very few Zerg players are doing right now is actually spreading creep with overlords. He's spreading his creep with his overlords, even though he lost a lot of creep. You don't lose the overlords spreading the creep, then you still have that base connected. He's got the base connected all the way to the third, with very few tumors actually just spreading his overlords instead. A really cool uh, thing that we just so rarely see. I do not like the overlord spread in general in this matchup because you lose too many, but what I really like is if you combine it with the queen. 
Yeah, that's what he's done here. Yeah. It's really exciting to see that. In conjunction with each other, you can spread your creeps so much faster that way. It's crazy. It's really, really crazy. You're so far as fast as your opponent's main base or natural third base, whatever. It is really, really tricky. It's not that hard to pull it off. You need the upgrade though for Overlord speed, but it's a really, it's a useful one. It's not only for the creep spread, but also to get your Overlords into good positions for scouting and have a quick glimpse what's going on. Usually, minerals are not really the issue for Zerg in a later stage of the game. It's more about the gas that you need. Yes. Um, the Spire is, of course, now almost done, but it's not going to help him against this drop to the top left. What will help him is the Overlord he's got in place to spot. His Lings are a little bit out of position, but he already made Spine Crawlers there as well. Speaking of Overlord spread here, he's going to be able to deny the fourth. And the third base will soon be attacked by a drop. But he's playing this the style that I mentioned earlier. This kind of this, this is what Dino talked about. Just getting this uh, units at oh wow, the structures actually at the third end of the main base. But now we have a good decent bundle. That was a great bundle, but the attack here is the angle is so difficult for a Zerg. The fourth base is hard to take for a Zerg, but easy for a Terran. Uh, but one thing to note is well, hold that thought because a bunch of links are going to run to the right side. He wants to pick up these siege tanks. The attack here is, is pretty cost efficient, trading links for tanks, and these ropes are not going to be something he's really going to want to have part of his composition later, so if he trades those, it's okay as well. That could have been a lot better though, with a decent bundle again into the Marines, he could have killed every single one of them, so the Marines were low on HP, but they could target out Zerkins and Roaches, because what the Ragnarok targeted were the tanks. Without the Siege tanks, of course, it's a little bit worse for Ragnarok to actually defend his expansion, but still, if you look at the overall supply, AST is in a decent position. His drop is being shut down exactly as mentioned before, and this will help Ragnarok to dominate the center of the map with food lords. Yeah, he's, he's going to... You know, I just said it a moment ago, but the map is tough as well. It's hard to take a fourth, but he's done it. He took a fourth, he took it fairly early on, and it was not pressured. He couldn't quite get over there and pressure it. The creep spread was really nice for the Overlords. And now, just now, at almost 17 minutes, is ASD able to try to work his way over there and stop the hatchet? So he's got so many extra minerals. He's got that Greer's Fire done now. He needs done. something against Broodlords, this is definitely true. So many spine crawlers now in order to defend this, but the medivacs are there. And with a good stim, he can snipe either the hatch or go and kill the spine crawlers too. The Zerglings catching the reinforcements is a big deal though. All those marines and also the siege tank gone before the rest of the Terran army runs in and then makes finally a good end to those guys. Yeah. Uh, he's down in supply here and loses his hatchery, but that was a good trade for the wings. The Broodlords are spotted. That's yeah. a, I would not want to be in that medivac. Not really. This is like a death mission. Send up to the main base of Ragnarok, taking down a few harvesters, but in the end the Broodlords will be there. The middle of the map is now once again being controlled by ASD. He's trying to move out. The fourth base in the middle of the map being taken by Ragnarok. In the bottom right we have another hatch. I feel like Ragnarok might be attacking too much. Whenever he loses those big waves of links, that makes him vulnerable to stuff like this. You know, if you don't have that group of links to just sweep in and push the area back or grab a drop, then you're not going to be able to control your bases anymore. This overload spread is also becoming a liability because so many of them died and he will soon be survivable if he doesn't pay attention. The Broodlords are very slow trying to make something happen against those two medivacs, but they move back without a problem at all. The Corruptors are too late and now this huge bank exists for ASD. He has the plus three plus the attack upgrade fully completed, starts the armor upgrade so low, but yeah, it's getting really tricky for, for Ragnarok. In order to make this work, he needs to save his bases, and I'm not quite sure if he has the units to pull them off. He does not have a lot of Zerkers on the map. He's still got some roaches in there, but they're just not quite able to seal the deal. Oh, got to be careful about those Yeah, roaches and siege tanks just don't mix. They really don't. Well, the siege tank wants to mix like that. Uh, the sport crawler is actually having multiple purposes here, so I'm about to take out another medevac uh, as well. But ASD has a great border right position. He can actually trade these units for the hatcher if he wants to. He needs to pull the medevac back if he's going to do that, though. He's going to lose so many of them to the corruptors. The hatch is just going to die. The third base gone now. Ragnarok is losing drones in the main base. ASD is just everywhere. He set up so many starports and is now building eight Vikings at a time, preparing for the food lots, sniping the spawning pool. If you don't have a lot of links on the map, then someone like ASD will just attack everywhere and take you apart. You have to have a good amount of links, otherwise when a drop comes into your main base, you're not going to be able to clean it up, your queen's not going to do anything, you can't fly your broodlords home. This is why you want more than spore crawlers and spine crawlers in your main base. 
You want to have a couple of units, but even the structures would have helped a, uh, Ragnarok a lot. So you only had them at the third base, not really a lot of them in the main. And now ASD is just everywhere. Yes, he's losing the fourth base, but with the economy that he has and this bank that he built, he can't just get so many Vikings that it's going to be very tough for Ragnarok to save his units. He has eight investors, the fungals will be important, but it's just the economy that he's lacking. He also has a base over at the 9 o'clock position as well, so he's, he's already built that a long time ago. It's not going to be a problem. He's killing a lot more drones here uh, rather than going for the hatchery. He probably wouldn't be able to kill with those roaches here, but he's even going to trade with the roaches okay, and in the main base, he's not done yet. He's actually going for the hive. Yeah. He starts to take the hive down, and there comes a huge drop headed towards the 12 o'clock start position. Uh, well, expansion. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it also flew through the 12 o'clock spawn as well. Now it's Viking time. Yeah, the Vikings are ready. All he's going to deal with is the investors. There are seven of them on the map, so he will want to split against that. He's not even going to attempt to save his economy. He knows that's a lost cause. He wants to trade really well with his army. That's the one thing he still has together here. With a good Viking split, ASD will be able to do a lot. He needs to be careful. There are Corruptors. There are also Infestors. This is the one shot that Ragnarok has now. He needs to make this work. We have also one Thor, but now here comes the battle, and the Vikings are bundled. There's it 20 Corruptors on the map, but it may not be enough. The Viking number is down to, to 7 though, 8, he's rebuilding it immediately, so many Corruptors. Yeah, and this is, you know, he's got no economy, but his army, if it wins the game for him, that's fine. We may actually have a race of elimination if this continues like this, because ASD is starting to kill the hatcheries, he's getting into the main base pretty soon. Those Marines are really missing with a good, uh, well, with a good stim and the spread, he might be able to dodge those fungals and go get under the brood lords. Uh, but now we suddenly don't have the Viking anymore. There is this bank for both players, but if you just look at the army supply, Ragnarok is so far ahead with 110 against 62. His army is just too strong. He has this Zerg death pole. Ah, uh, the fungal pops out uh, to greet those Marines, but he actually doesn't get any of them. Just barely alive. So many of these Marines healed by Medivac since he's got four and this group five, in fact. One of the things that uh, ASD doesn't know about is the space to the bottom right. Could he just double check his vision just to make sure that he doesn't yeah, really know? Yeah, he doesn't know. Yeah, he has no idea. So this is definitely uh, becoming an issue because we still have income for Ragnarok. And this is something that ASD doesn't know about. He assumes that the TSL Zerg does not really have this many bases. Yeah, he's, he's a little bit in the dark there, but the uh, Medivacs are going to pin up his hatchery to the south. And he may, when he flies around with those, be able to see the hatchery uh, down there as well. Uh, the, the new one that is. There's one Ultralis hanging out in the garden. Uh oh. Those he's Vikings don't stand a chance. This is just not a. He's not able to pull this off. He, has not, he doesn't have enough units. He, he took a game where he had firm control over the economy, but lost too many actual army units. The reason why his drops were able to work is because there were not a lot of links out for Ragnarok. Why? Because all of his larva was spent and all of his resources were spent on those corruptors. You know, you can only have a certain amount of units on the map. You can only have 200 supply. You can have the links to defend his bases, but he sure had the corruptors to make sure the Vikings weren't going to kill his brood lords. He's trying to build, build the spawning pool and have something that he, he might... If he has the spawning pool, Zerg things will be in the game again, but he doesn't need them. He doesn't. GG. GG. Ragnarok takes the second game. It's actually a little bit cute that he tried to rebuild the spawn pool his entire attack, but the army that he had was just so strong that there was no way for ASD to win. The starports were dying, the Vikings were gone. Yep. Well played. A 2-1 now for TSL. ASD was not the answer. TSL looking pretty happy about that result. Yep. Um, I mean, Ragnarok delivers. This is one of the players that Coach Lee always talks about, and this time he is able to win two games already. And so far, FX Open hasn't showed big cards, but once again, you know, picking a player like ESD here didn't work out for them. Uh, he was not able to pull through yet again. He's played a ton of times in GSTL and has won like one out of eight or something like that. Like. Not uh, not your guy to rely on, not the, the guy that they needed here. And who do you rely upon now? Are you going for a Zerg player? We ha we will definitely see ZVZs today, so you could go for Sirius. He's really strong he against... He's strong right now. Yeah, he played very well against MA with really interesting strategies. Are you going for a ZVZ? Are you trying to pull out another Tyrant player? Are you going for a Protoss? I think, I think Sirius is the choice here. It's either I would say either Sirius or Lucky, but because Lucky is one of the heavier ones, 
Uh, I would say serious, but Lucky is over there. It's actually going to be the best. They've called upon the assassin, the clumsy assassin, the best. He's, like I said, he's asking, who do you need me to kill? I may lose the next game after this, but I will actually kill this guy if you need me to. I will do it for free even because I'm on your team. Another Terran player is being sent out. I did not expect the best. I did not expect the Terran either. Yeah, I thought after the last game that we've seen that a Terran player is maybe not the answer. Or not what uh, FSO tries to pull off here, but it is the best indeed. And we'll find out if he can kill Ragnarok. Before we head into the next game though, we are having another 5 minute break. And it's once again a Terran versus Zerg with the best up for FXO now. He wants to take down Ragnarok. Will Zerg prevail? We're going to find out. We'll be back in five. to me. 